All right, Shalom, Shalom. I'm going to start off by giving all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Makar Kadash. I'm going to say and give double honors to the apostles and the bishop elders of Great Millstone for teaching his word and truth and sincerity and for reading well. And salutations to my fellow Akim across the four corners of the globe, preaching and prophesying in the name of Yahweh, by Shalom, Shai. Shalom to the elect. Okay, hey, I'm the brother Gabar Yahweh from GMS Hawaii, coming to you with another live lesson or pre-recorded lesson. Like this epistle was um, inspired by a video that um, yesterday I came across on TikTok and I was able to share it with other um, the Kwanyam through our app. And um, Apostle Aramlab was able to pass it on and then Elder Apostle, <clears throat> Elder Apostle Aramlab passed it on and then Elder Apostle Gabar did a video on it right here which is entitled Plantation Christianity, White Man Jesus, Feel Good Nonsense, Charles Cocock Jones. And um, I myself, I was trying to read through the book before I actually did my own particular lesson on this. Um, but it's a little bit of a read. So I, I had got some excerpts. But first and foremost, I want to bring out um, Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. This is, it says, Surely oppression make of a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. Right, and like Elder Apostle Gobar said in his video, when you learn this truth, you know, this truth will uh, make you angry. And knowing that the oppressors who are oppressing us, one, knowing who the oppressor truly is, two, knowing that we are the Lord's people, three, knowing that we're still oppressed. So when you when you get oppressed, it makes you mad, it makes you angry. It, it, it'll have you set it off. For a matter of fact, I was going to look up these two men. You got uh, Denmark Vesey, right? Um, Denmark, select it. Den, uh, Denmark Vesey. And he also you had uh, Matt Turner, right? And <laughs> these dudes uh, read the scriptures, and they got angry, man, and they set it off, man. You know what I'm saying? They, they set it the fuck off, man. They went off and um, had... Um, created uh what you call uh uprisings and so this is the reason why uh edomites like uh charles cocock jones this is the reason why they felt the need or some of these edomites felt the need to push these scriptures the way they push it you know the christianity that you know today is what apostle tahar uh coined the phrase he coined is plantation christianity the whole i love you i just want to love I just want to be docile and I just want to be uh, obedient to the superior powers that be and, and that uh, my station is, is, is OK because in in I'll get my kingdom when I die, you know, and that's what that's what Christianity is all about in a nutshell. And it's a hypocrite's religion. All right. Because like I said, when you read these scriptures, it make you want to set it off. Right. It make you want to go get angry and get and get wow, you know. Because you're angry, but then you got to understand wisdom. And that wisdom trumps your, your carnal anger. Because we are never going to be angry as the Heavenly Father is. So anyway, Denmark Vesey, I just want to uh, read about his uprising, right? Um, Denmark Vesey, right. So Denmark Vesey, he was a, a, a former slave, right? It says Denmark Vesey also uh, Telemake, Telemake was a free black and community leader in Charleston, South Carolina, who was accused and convicted of planning a major uh, slave revolt. Although the alleged plot was discovered before it could be realized, its potential scale stoked the fears of the antebellum planters, which is just antebellum planter class, which is Edomites, right? It's nothing but Edomites, slave planter class, that led to the increased restrictions on both enslaved and free uh, Israelites. Likely born into slavery in St. Thomas, Vesey was enslaved by Captain Joseph Vesey in Bermuda. All right, I'm going to skip down because I'm going to read all of this. Anyway, it says right here, the background, I'm sorry, the planning. Even after gaining his freedom, Vesey continued to socialize with many slaves. He became increasingly set on helping his new friends break from the bonds of slavery. Vesey inspired by the congressional debates over the status 
of the Missouri Territory and how it should be admitted to the United States since slavery appeared to be under attack. Bessie developed followers among mostly enslaved, and this is what they call it black people, right? We're not black, we're Israelites. Enslaved black people in the second Presbyterian. There were no other people enslaved. Why you gotta put us out and say we're black people? No, these are Israelites, man. Uh, listen to this. Bessie, De De Bessie developed followers among the mostly enslaved black people in the second Presbyterian church. Now, one thing you're gonna find out is that this dude, uh, Charles Cocock Jones, he was a he was a Presbyterian. So while this man was claiming to spread the gospel or spread the good news or spread the the, the, the book of salvation, the Bible to us via his uh his his doctrine, right? He had us enslaved. He had us in captivity. And ultimately, when you read this book, you're gonna find out that he didn't have a righteous uh a righteous mission when it came to the scriptures. Like this video says right here, this is the video I found and I shared yesterday, and Apostle Aramla and Apostle Gabar brought it out. You, know, you brothers can watch it if you want. I'm not going to play it right now. It's like six minutes long. I just want to get to the point, you know, because the religion of Christianity that you know as today is nothing more than a hypocrite's religion, right? People who purportedly or reportedly are so called sanctified and want people saved and love everybody. In reality, they hate you. In reality, they want to enslave you. In reality, they want to keep you at a docile, low estate. What's that? What's the term docile mean, right? Docile, right? The term docile, right? People use it. They don't know what it is. It says, if someone is docile, he is easily taught or handled. And that's what that was the that was Jane uh, Charles Cocox Jones' mission was to make the slaves easily handled. He didn't want you to rebel. He didn't want you to um, see him as the enemy. He wanted you to see him as your savior. He wanted you to see him as uh, somebody that cared about you. But wait a minute, this, this man had three plantations. He was a wealthy man, right? And his his job was enslaving the children of Israel, all right? He got all his illustrious theological and uh, uh, seminary background, but he didn't know the truth because the truth wasn't open to him. The truth of the Bible was open to him. He used the Bible so that he could put his slaves in a in an easily handleable state. And we're going to go through it, right? So going back into uh, Denmark, Vesey, Vesey developed followers among the mostly enslaved black people in the Second Presbyterian Church and then the independent AME African Church. The latter's congregation represented more than 10% of the black people in the city. They resented the harassment by city officials economic conditions in Charleston area became difficult since the economic decline affected the city in 1821. Vesey and a few slaves began to conspire and plan a revolt. For the revolt to be successful, Vesey had to recruit others and strengthen his army. Because Denmark Vesey was a lay preacher, right? You see, he's a lay preacher, right? What is a lay preacher? Right? What is a lay preacher? A lay preacher is a... a a preacher, a lay preacher is a preacher who is not ordained, i.e. a lay person, who may not hold a formal university degree in theology. And that's what they look at us. They look at us as lay preachers because we don't have uh, what James James Cocock had, uh, which is these formal, so-called formal education and, and theology. And really, his theology was nothing but witchcraft and wizardry, all right? It was a lie, right? And he pushed this theology of Christianity, his version of it, to his slaves to further control them, okay? So it says, Denmark Vesey was a lay preacher. When he had recruited enough followers, he would review plans of the revolt with his followers at his home during religious classes. I told you, Vesey inspired slaves by connecting their potential freedom to the biblical story of Exodus God's delivery of the children of Israel from Egypt, Egyptian slavery, right? And why, like I said, when you read these scriptures, these scriptures don't make you want to um, side with all the heathen. The scriptures don't put you in a place, the true understanding of the Bible, don't make you want to join hand in hand with this devil, not even with the wicked of your own people. It make you want to askew evil, 
It make you want to get away from these people, and it make you want to set it off, man. But the one that's going to set it off is Yahweh Bashi Yahweh Shah. Okay, this man right here, along with his cohorts, they're nothing but Edomite monsters, right? Demons and liars, right? And then when I found this video, I was like, damn. The first thing I did was download it to my phone and I sent it out to the chat. The brothers was like, they was taken back because this is hidden for a long time. This was hidden knowledge, man. But like the scripture says in the book of uh, Obadiah 1 and 6, right? 1 and 6, Obadiah 1 and 6, right? Obadiah 1 and 6 says, how are the how are the things that Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? Right? And Esau's hidden agenda, his wickedness is sought up. And like Elder Apostle talk, it's like Elder Apostle Gabar said in his video, the, the scriptures were sealed during the 1800s, during the time we were in chattel slavery. So it wasn't those seals wasn't broken yet. So what was this man really teaching you? Well, he wasn't teaching you anything except to be docile, easily handled easily swayed, easily controlled, right? Because you had a whole bunch of um, uprisings that happened. Uh, Cocock lived between 1804 and 1863, so you know he heard about what happened with Denmark Vesey in um, 1822, 1820, 1822, and even with Nat Turner uh, in 1831, right? The whole thing. Now, Nat Turner, he was a man that read the scriptures and this is not a that's not an accurate picture of him because they, they really destroyed him but he was obviously he was a so-called black man. but the point of the matter is uh nat turner was an enslaved american uh, israelite carpenter and preacher who led a four-day rebellion of both enslaved and free black people in southampton uh county virginia in august 1831 nat turner's rebellion resulted in a death of approximately six white men women and children before state militias suppressed the uprising. Turner was captured in uh, 1831, October, and was executed after trial in November. Before his execution, he told his story to the attorney, Thomas Ruffin Gray, who published the Confessions of Nat Turner. All right, and then it says, um, let's see what started his, his visions and religious activity. Turner was deeply religious and was often seen fasting, praying, or immersing, or immersed in reading the stories of the Bible. Why is he doing it? He's an Israelite, right? His spirit, the scripture says, our spirit bear witness with this spirit that we are the sons of the living power. So now, mind you, somebody reading the scriptures, getting the spirit, jumping on them to uh, you know, rebel against his enemies, his, his oppressors, right? To want to free himself, right? Why would this man teach you the Bible in that sense if that made him do that? Well, he wanted to teach you. He didn't want to teach you the Bible. He wanted to teach you a version of the Bible, right? So you got scenes like this and um, scenes like uh, the one in uh, 12 Years a Slave, like uh, portrayed in this movie, 12 Years a Slave, when they gave you the scriptures, they only wanted you to hear the scriptures where it spoke about serving your master because it was all about his benefit. He wanted his workers to make more shit so he can get more money. Servant, which knew his Lord's will, which knew his Lord's will. And prepared not himself, prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Did you hear that? stripes that nigga that don't obey his lord that's his master you see that there nigga shall be beaten with many stripes yeah that and, that, and this is how church scenes from uh i mean church was you know set up for gene and it's the same way now what it had you believing in the master so-called master having you believing in esau and his system it had you believing that he loves you he cares for you he wants the best for you right but he didn't want you he didn't care about you right he wanted you in complete control right and that's what these devils did okay 
So, like I said, when you truly understand the scriptures, man, you ain't playing. It ain't, it, it ain't a game because, like, the, the scriptures say, and Elder Apostle Gabar brought this out, um, with much wisdom comes much grief. So let's go back to Nat Turner. Turner was deeply religious and was often seen fasting, praying, or immersed in reading the stories of the Bible. He had visions that he interpreted as messages from God, which influenced his life. The historian Patrick Breen states that Nat Turner thought that God used the natural world as a backdrop in front of which he placed signs and omens. Well, he did. That's what the natural world is all about. Green further states that Nat Turner claimed he possessed a gift of prophecy and that he could interpret these divine revelations, which he, he could have been a prophet. He was an Israelite. Turner often conducted religious services, preaching the Bible to his fellow slaves who dubbed him the prophet. In addition to the blacks, Turner garnered some white followers, such as Ethel Brantley, whom Turner baptized after convincing him to cease from his wickedness. Which you can't, you can't, you can't, he can't have no eat Edomites ain't going to cease from any wickedness. It's in him. It's in him. All right. And so again, going back to this demon, Charles Cocock Jones, you know, let's, I want to go through a little bit of the book. It's really difficult. So I only got so far, but I did find this kind of interesting right here. And it says right here, the first direction calls us upon masters to understand well how far your power over your slaves extended and what limits God have set thereto. Remember that they have immortal souls and are and are equally capable of salvation with yourselves, which you Edomites, you're not capable of salvation. Salvation ain't open to you Edomites. All right, so you're not capable of salvation. Yeah, you got an immortal soul and it'll get put back into a body, right? But you ain't you ain't getting salvation. Salvation ain't for you, Edomites. Again, these, these are hypocrites. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 16. Okay? And it says, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one more saw of meat sold his birthright, for ye know how that after when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he saw the carefully with tears. So you Edomites, you can't you can't get no salvation. You can't, you can't get repentance. And salvation comes with repentance. And repentance is only open to Israel. So again, he says, remember that they have immortal souls and are equally capable of salvation with yourselves. And therefore, you have no power to do anything which shall hinder their salvation. Remember that God is their absolute owner and that you have none but a derived and limited property over them. Well, that's true. That's absolutely true. We belong to Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai. All right. And your time over, over us is limited. The scriptures speak about that. The book of Job, chapter 16. Job 16. Uh, I want to say, oh, sorry, yeah. Job 14 and 5. Job chapter 14, verse 5. Okay. Job 14 and 5. It says, seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So you only got a certain amount of time for your rulership. You only got a certain amount of time to have us in your hands. Okay? So it says, it says, um, remember that God is their absolute owner, and that you had which that's that, that's not the Heavenly Father's name. His name is Yahweh, and his son name is Yahweh Shah. And this word for God right here is the is G lowercase o and d but that's just Allah in the hebrew which is the powers remember that i'm gonna keep reading remember that god is their absolute owner and that you have none but a derived and limited property in them that they and you are equally under the government of the laws of god and no we're not no we're not that's a that's another falsehood and that's a hypocrite move because if you were under the laws of the most high then why you ain't following them? why you breaking them? psalms 50 and 16 but unto the wicked, so-called white man, the Most High said, What hast thou to do to declare thy, my statutes, but that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my word behind thee? You see? So this man, he has the Bible, he had the scriptures, but he didn't follow none of the laws, statute commandments. 
Motherfucker couldn't even keep a beard on his face, let alone keep the rest of the laws. You know what I'm saying? He didn't follow any of the laws, statute and commandments of Yahweh Bashiach was shot. And the only time he used the Bible is for his nefarious purposes. Okay? And that's what they're doing today. So now we they have the truth through the spirit. We're contending with those who don't because they really believe this white Christianity, this Edomite version of the Savior, this Edomite version of the Bible, right? Because for so long, you know, people like Vocab Malone, they speak against us, right? But the thing is, for so long, Esau didn't even want us to have no part with the Bible. He didn't even want he didn't even want us to have salvation. He didn't want us to hear the word. He didn't want us to hear the gospel. People like John Calvin, people like Charles Cocott Jones, people like uh, Joseph Smith, they ain't give a fuck about Jake. We were looked at as animals, cattle, beasts of burden. Nothing that was even remotely sought for salvation of their souls. Now, all of a sudden, in 2024, you people believe that the one you only call God and Jesus loves everybody. You believe that you believe that uh, he wants everybody to be saved, any nation and every nation. But that's totally false. But what, what about all them hundreds of years when we were just working and we were just getting put to death and we were just getting uh, destroyed and, and, and partially oppressed? When they didn't think about us, where was that then? These are Presbyterian clergymen, right? Exactly, man. Hypocrites, man. Christianity ain't nothing but a fucking hypocrite religion, man. It ain't a, it ain't a, it ain't the true, it ain't true. It's false. So let's keep on reading. It says, um, it says, God is their reconciled tender. Let me read that again. Remember that God is their absolute owner and that you have none but a derived and limited property in them that they and you are equally under the government of the laws of God, that God is their reconciled, tender, father. And if they be as good, doth love them, and if they be as good, doth love them as well as you, and that they are the redeemed ones of Christ. Well, we are. The Israelites, we are the redeemed ones of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Therefore, so use them as to preserve Christ's right and enter an interest in them. It says, remember that you are Christ's trustees or the guardians of their souls. No, you eat them, I say. Shit, you ain't no trustees of shit. And that the greater your power is over them, the greater your charge is of them and your duty for them. So most, most you exercise both your power and love to bring them to do the knowledge and the faith of Christ into the just obedience of God's commands. So serve your necessities by your slaves as to prefer God's interests and their spiritual and everlasting happiness. Teach them the way to heaven and do all for their souls, which I have before directed you to. Do for all your other servants, thou, I mean, though you may, though you may make some differences in their labor and diet and clothing. Yet none as the furthering of their salvation. If they be in infidels, use them as tendeth to win them to Christ. And that's what these Edomites looked at us as infidels, right? They looked at us as an unbelieving, well, not just an unbelieving people. They just looked at us as a no people, beast, beast. You know what I'm saying? And so this is the book of Ecclesiastes 14 and 7. It says, and if he doth good, he doeth it unwillingly. And at the last, he will declare his wickedness. So here it is, this Edomite, he's purportedly doing all his good. And if you read through this book, the more you read, the more racist shit going to pop up, up out of it. I actually um have this book downloaded on my phone. And um I was reading through it earlier. And I, shit, I just got through the, uh, I just got through the, what do you call it? Oh, goodness. Um, the Table of Contents. I just got through the table of content and it, it was just it was just ridiculous, man. It says right here, um, page two. I'll share it with you as I read it. Let me go back, man. Right. Let's see. Page two, right? In here, right? It says um account. Oh yeah, account, 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 account. 
just doing oh right here it says account of the introduction of negroes into the colonies under the government of great britain it was in 50, it was in a year Salaki, just bear with me, brothers. Just bear with me. Just bear with me. I just want to. I just want to bring because he gave he gave a history of when slavery started and whatnot. But I just want to just bear with me, brothers. I'm trying to get the information out as concise as possible. Yeah. So this book right here, um, I saved a couple of. Uh, I saved a couple of. Uh, what do you call it? Highlights. Um, yeah, so anyway, I was still reading through this book and um I was just reading through the table of contents. And so, right here, it says, although I hope I am a Christian, yet I am not qualified to instruct my servants. This is what he was saying that these, um, these Edomites would say if they had to instruct them. It says, I live, let me see, it's called excuses or why, they, why planters wouldn't teach their slaves, right? So it says the Negroes have got have it says excuses in relation to discharge the obligation now improved to the rest upon church and of Christ, usually advanced in the slave states. The Negroes have the gospel already. They are incapable of receiving religious instruction except in a very limited extent. And this is what these Edomites believe to this day. And that's the reason why Christianity you only understand it to a limited extent you don't have a full understanding of the scriptures unless you come into the truth and are taught by a man of the lord they are incapable of receiving religious instruction except in a very limited extent the gospel meets with little success among them we have no means of supplying them with the gospel there are peculiar and great difficulties to be uh, uh, overcome it's used to sometimes urged by owners i am a master but no christian and therefore excused from the duty right and you know he's just trying to convince people to push that that uh that plantation christianity shit well other edomites owners to push that christianity shit over his over the lord's people man and again this is the reason why you don't um uh have you christians don't have a full understanding of the bible right this is job not a not of uh, job 24 knowest thou not this of old since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphant of the wicked is short, and that the joy of the hypocrite is but for a moment. And like I, I was saying earlier, Christianity is a hypocrite's religion. And these Edomites are hypocrites, because at the same time, this dude telling you about so-called salvation, he's a doctor of divinity, he got all of this shit going on, he wants he he cares for your salvation. He had you in slavery. He was breaking the Lord's law by having you in his custody. He bought and sold you and stole you, and that's not what the Lord wanted for us. Now, it happened because of judgment, but he don't know that. He didn't know that. He still don't know that. Even back today, he don't know that, right? This dude was a straight-up agent of chaos, man. He was allowed to run rampant on the earth and push his bullshit doctrine, right? So, ah. Uh, I wanted to bring this out. I'm going to read some more in this book. If you brothers want to read this book, you don't even got to purchase it. You can go, you can download it free. Just type this in on here, and uh, I might leave the the link in the description box. But brothers, you can do the work too. Just type this in, uh, the religious instruction of the Negroes in the United States, and then uh, put free PDF. And make sure you go to archive.org, and it'll come right up. It's free. So you don't got to pay for it. And you can read through it. And you can and, and, and see what you know was said, you know. And um, so with that one, give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Talk of God. Say double honor to the apostles and salutations to the elect. Shalom on to the next.